So let's get into some of the finer aspects of azimuth adjustment. As I mentioned in video number one, uh, the stylus does not have to be aligned with the generator in the cartridge. You hope that it is. And of course, if it is, then doing an electrical adjustment of the azimuth using instruments that some folks make uh, will get you there. They'll do a pretty good job. And it's far better than guessing. Um, and those instruments are measuring channel separation because when the azimuth of the cartridge is off, you start losing channel separation. So using those instruments to get equal channel separation, tilting the azimuth till it's equal, is a great idea because it will get you close. Now, um, there's not a lot of talk about it, but there are a lot of USB microscopes on the market and people use them for measuring rake angle of the stylus that's this angle sra stylus rake angle um but an almost better use for it is really looking at the stylus head on if you can get your usb microscope to do it and seeing if mechanically you can get your stylus aligned correctly what are the disadvantages of using an electrical method to do azimuth adjustment well most good cartridges have channel separation on the order of 25 to 28 dB. That's considered good. Um, more inexpensive cartridges are typically in that range, although frankly I've seen cartridges as high as $5,000 that have a spec of only 28 decibels of channel separation. It's not great. It is what it is. And I'll talk about channel separation as it affects cartridge performance, which is a fascinating subject in another video. Um, cartridges that are better will have somewhere between 28 and 33 or 34 dB of channel separation. That's considered a very, very good cartridge. So the instruments that I measured before for measuring channel separation and getting it equal by doing an azimuth adjustment, those are going to work pretty well for those cartridges. And they're going to get you reasonably close. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about an acoustic method for doing azimuth adjustment. Um, why don't these instruments work on soundsmith cartridges? Uh, this is something that's not well known. I have mentioned it on a number of blogs. It's on my website. And some folks have said, gee, that's really weird. Is there something wrong with the soundsmith cartridges that you can't use those instruments for doing an azimuth adjustment? And the answer is absolutely not. We have unique cartridge designs which put the channel separation often well above 34 dB at 1 kilohertz. Some of our cartridges are up in the high 30s. Many of them are up into the 40s. This is very unusual for cartridges. I won't get into why our channel separation is so high because of our design, but suffice it to say many of our cartridges are in the mid to upper 30s to 40s to mid 40s even some of them higher when you make a cartridge that has channel separation that's up at those stratospheric levels it may not be even that means even with the generator aligned correctly and the stylus aligned correctly in the groove one channel might be at 37 db and the other channel might be at 42 or 43 db does that asymmetry indicate a defective cartridge? Absolutely not. What it indicates is that when you make a cartridge that gets up into those stratospheric levels of channel separation, there may not be perfect symmetry when the generator is aligned and the stylus aligned in terms of azimuth. So what do you do? I mean, you can't use those instruments. We get emails saying, gee, I used such and such a device and I've got the channel separation equal and whatever it is, 33 dB, 34, 35 dB, and the cartridge is tilted way off to one side and it's all distorted. It sounds terrible. So when I just eyeball it and set it straight, it sounds fine. Okay, for obvious reasons. If you attempt to get the channel separation equal on a cartridge that has very, very high degrees of channel separation and there's a slight asymmetry channel to channel, you're not doing yourself a favor. So we don't recommend using those instruments. We recommend setting the cartridge straight visually and then using another method to do some minor, minor tweaks. Um, but basically you want to set it visually. We go to great pains 
to make sure that the azimuth of the stylus is set perfectly or within reason to the body of the cartridge. And of course we make every attempt to align the generator perfectly with respect to the body of the cartridge. And because we do all those things, it's part of the reason that we get very high degrees of channel separation. So stylus azimuth adjustment, very, very critical. And of course, as you get up into the finer shapes, any sort of misalignment can cause really poor tracing of the record and cause distortions and uh, very poor high frequency performance. So azimuth is critical. Don't understand why some tonar manufacturers don't understand why it's so critical and why being one or two degrees off uh, can be bad because it is. So you really want a method to be able to tweak it and we recommend it strongly.